podcast where you learn how to go from agent to entrepreneur. And we've got a phenomenal entrepreneur with us today, Tom Caffarella, who you may have seen on Facebook Live. He's also the host of the Real Estate Mogul podcast. So we're super, super excited to have him here. Uh, and Greg's got some awesome stuff going on in his office. We'll talk about that in a second because he's doing filming uh, around the office. So he's fresh off of that, actually right in the middle, I think, of a day of shooting. So first of all, Greg Harrelson, how are you today? Man, I tell you what, I'm doing good. I've got my great friend and a lot of people in the audience will, uh, or those that will listen will, will know Jeff Manson. He's actually here. And uh, you can hear my throat's a little bit sore or a little bit hoarse. Uh, we've been shooting for two straight days. So we are uh, just pounding out some great content and uh, for the next episode of Keeping It Real where he comes on on site. So we're doing a deep dive in my company, which is uh, which has been fun, but exhausting. I will say that, but I'm excited to talk to Tom. I've, uh, you know, gotten to know a little bit about Tom. I don't, we don't know each other yet. I think we're going to uh, get to know each other now, but um, I'm, I'm really impressed and excited to kind of hear what the heck he's got going on because I know he is an absolute machine when it comes to generating uh, listing leads. So thanks, Tom. Yeah for being on thank you guys for having me i'm looking forward to this so tom give us a little for those that don't know you and, and maybe haven't haven't caught your podcast the real estate mogul podcast um and, and you you're doing some some uh coaching and strategy sessions and stuff like that on uh, on facebook live as well so people may be kind of familiar kind of seeing you around but i don't think most people unless they've really dived into your story really understand kind of what you've accomplished. So I want to start just with kind of where you're at now, what the business looks like, and then we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what the the origin of what that was, because that that brings us to the problem that we want to tackle today, which is building that machine of generating like motivated seller leads, but then following up and building a team of agents that will actually work the leads. So what does your team look like right now? So I've got a team of 160 agents that I've built over the past two years. And my background is probably different than 99.9% .9 of people who are real estate brokers. So I got into the real estate brokerage business by accident. I never wanted to be a broker. I never wanted to have a team. Um, I had no interest in the real estate agency side, but I'm a real estate investor. So I fix and flip over 100 properties per year. I've got a pretty big rental por uh, property portfolio in the Boston market. And going back to about 2012, 2013, when the market completely shifted and you couldn't get good deals on HUD Home Store or Home Path or at auctions or anything like that, I had to go directly and find motivated sellers myself in order to still get those great deals. So what ended up happening was we were just marketing, you know, mailing, cold calling, internet marketing on Facebook and Google to get leads. And I ended up hiring my first agent just to help me, not to convert those into listings, but to help me acquire the properties. And he kept coming back to me time and time again. And he would say to me, you know, we are leaving so much money on the table because we're not taking any listings. And I said, well, you know, I, I really don't want to jeopardize my, my opportunity to, to potentially buy the property. And what he said to me was like, look, I know on some of these, there's 0% chance, right? There's 0% chance that they're gonna take an investment offer. Let me just try to list a couple of them. And this is back in 2013, he listed 45 properties that year mm. from this exact exact methodology. And at by the end of that year, I said, you know, man, we're onto something. And since then we've just been, you know, racing against time, adding as many agents as we possibly can. and you know, I follow guys like Greg and, um, you know, listen to everything they have to say on how to build a team because we've built this thing completely by accident and we've got so much work to do to get it to really where it needs to be. That's awesome. incredible. Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, that's, that's, it's interesting because there, I think it was, I can't remember who said this, but there was somebody that said to look out and very pay very close attention to unexpected successes. And that's essentially what you did, Tom. You have someone coming to you saying, look, we got to do this and you give it a try. And then bam, it's like, you know, it just, it's totally unexpected. You weren't in intending to get into that, but essentially what you stumbled into is one of the best ways to generate seller leads, right? Counterintuitive mm -hmm. to agents, but makes sense to, from an investing side, but most people don't want to straddle both of those worlds. Right. Um, uh -huh. So, and I, and we'll get into that conversation of just why that is and, and how to deal with agents and, and increase the success of your recruiting. But yeah, take me back a little bit. Um, so, so you bring on who, who's the guy that you brought on to initially like help you out with the acquisitions? What was his background, and and what what role is he in today? 
he was a leasing agent in Boston. So he just, you know, was a real estate agent that helped people, you know, find properties to rent. And so he came to me, I just put out an ad on Craigslist. And at the time I had no agents, it was just me. Uh, I was the broker owner, but I, I really wasn't doing a lot of business. So nobody wanted to work for me at that time. I couldn't get anybody at all to, to even apply for the job. So, you know, a couple of people here and there, I would try to interview. He came across my plate. He was very professional. He seemed, you know, trustworthy and wanted to work hard. And so, you know, I just kind of eased him into it. So I went on a lot of the appointments with him initially, got him ramped up. And this is just on the acquisition side. And then all of a sudden, like I said, he just decided, you know, man, we're leaving some money on the table. So he started uh, converting those into listings. And now he's still doing the same thing. He's still in the same role he's at today where he gets these motivated seller appointments goes on them and then, you know, helps really the seller make a determination, does it make sense to sell to an investor or does it make sense to sell retail? And a lot of times most sellers don't really know the pros and cons of both until we get out there and we educate them. Hmm. So how, how, many, uh, I wonder, how many leads are being generated on a weekly, monthly, daily basis? We now generate over 1,500 seller leads a month. And we go on roughly a hundred face-to-face seller appointments a week. Wow! Wow! Okay, yeah, so it's huge. It's huge. Right. It's huge. It's huge volume. But don't let me fool you. I'm not let doing me anything. To that. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me fool you, though. I'm not doing anything magical here. I'm spending money. So it's not like you know I've created this this magical system where that nobody can access. This is me spending money. And it is worthwhile for me because on a fix and flip in Boston, I can make 50, 60, 70, 80 grand. So if I spend $10,000 on motivated seller leads and I get two listings and I do one deal, that's very profitable for me. And, you know, that's the model that I have. Well, I appreciate you being transparent about that because I think that we could we could go off into the, wow, look at what Tom's doing on creating all these leads. And then everyone's, you know, saying later on, yeah, but he's spending a lot of money. So what if you're spending a lot of money, right? As long as mm -hmm. you're managing your money, that, that's the critical mm -hmm. thing. So I think you've probably got that dialed in. Like wh what kind of percent of, of the leads come in? Like how many deals will you do on a monthly basis? I know it could, it could vary, but uh, what, what's a common month look like for number of deals you do versus listings taken? Yeah, so a common month looks like we buy 10 properties. That's a very common month. And so it's a very small percentage because for most people in this market right now, it doesn't make sense to sell to investors. There's got to be a yeah. reason. The, mar the market is hot. And for the most part, when we go out there, they want retail pricing. And so that's fine. That's what we give them. Our closing ratio is very, very low. And that's the number one thing in my business right now that I'm working on is number one, trying to find great agents that can convert these leads. And number two, getting the newer people who are somewhat generating their own leads to get uh, a very much higher rate of conversion as well. Mm -hmm. So that is my biggest problem as of right now. I've got quite literally too many leads and there's a big gap between my number one, two and three salespeople who will convert at 30, 35, 40% on an appointment to some people that I have that are newer they may convert 5% of their appointments, which sounds mm -hmm. crazy, but um, it's really the truth. And it's kind of, you know, just one of those things that I'm working night and day on trying to fix the, the problem. Yeah. Now you've got 160 agents um, yep. and, and there's about 400 appointments going on per month. And is there a hierarchy or how do the leads get distributed to the agents? I mean, because if it's just an equal distribution, then obviously it's uh, maybe two appointments uh, per person or, or how is that working? How does the distribution of the leads work? Yeah. So like any other brokerage, I've got, you know, a wide variety of people. I mean, some of them are, are completely part time. They don't get any leads at all. They don't want any leads. That we've got people that are full time. So, so the way that I do it, and it's not necessarily 100% scientific, is you know I look at who's closing deals and I just push more leads their way. There you so, go. you know, it's it's nothing that's um, you know magical or anything like that. But again, even so, the difference between my my highest closer and the people that are still getting leads is so varied. And then we also, so we have people on the dialer. So we've got mm -hmm. over 10,000 seller leads, like going back a couple of years. 
and I have people just calling on Mojo, calling through all of those leads, trying to book appointments. So I'll have a brand new agent that will sign on to my office. This actually literally happened this week. They sign on on Monday. They've got an appointment on Wednesday because they're calling through the old lead database. Someone might have filled out a form two years ago, and they, for whatever reason, they never got back to us, and now they're ready to sell. So we've mm -hmm. got brand new rookie agents that are they're going out, and honestly, they're just kind of falling on their face. And I've always been recommended, hey, have an experienced agent go out with them. But my experienced agents are so busy that they don't want to go on these appointments. So it's kind of like I'm, I'm caught between a rock and a hard place on a lot of these different things. Yeah, that's great. And the lead, are they coming from both direct mail and social media? Or are you using both formats? So I use four lead sources. So I mail a lot. I have a mail center in my office. I've got somebody that works full time in the mail room. That's all they do is send out letters. Um, I I use. Um, are you familiar with? You're familiar with a thousand calls a day, right? Because you've you've spoken yep. on them before. So I use them for my for my cold calling. Um, I run a lot of Facebook ads, and then I do Google pay per click. So those are the four lead right. sources that I use to generate leads. Right. So you're, it's, I call that total immersion. You're hitting them by the phone line, you're hitting them by the mailbox, and you're hitting them by their uh, social media. It's like and, shock and awe. Yeah, and, and I actually tried to create a door knocking campaign. So the, the final straw was like, you know, getting them face to face, um, you know, at their doorstep. And I actually hired a guy to go door to door, and he did really, really well. But the problem is in Boston is once the weather starts turning, nobody wants to be out door knocking in December, mm. January, February. So, um, but yeah, we hit them every other way um, right now. Yeah. You know, Matt, I think it's important for the audience to know that, you know, not everyone's going to spend, you know, they, they don't have an unlimited budget to go and spend to, to buy mm -hmm. leads. Some people are not that strong. And if they did have the money and spent, they're not that strong at actually calculating ROIs. So they may actually waste their money. Um, but what everyone needs to understand is Tom's an example of somebody that's got a plan. It's like, okay, we're going to generate these leads. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to set the systems up to do it. And then he gets these leads. So anyone can do that. Anyone can go out there and do some social media, can do some direct mail, can do some calls. Of course, I'm a big caller, so I'm always mm -hmm. promoting call, call, call. But the key is, is Tom's taking action. He's just taking action. He's not, he hasn't told us he's done anything much different than what some other people are doing. Now his messaging may different, be different. The, who, who knows what's in his letter or his postcards? Maybe there's some uniqueness there, but the, the, the process is very simple. It's very basic, but I'm assuming that you're probably really consistent at it. You said you oh, had God. somebody in, in a mail, in your mail room. That, mm -hmm. that tells me that that's a system. It's probably dialed in pretty good. It probably works very efficient, and it probably is extremely consistent, which is ultimately the key. Yeah, so when I when I got into the real estate investing business, I started out with a, a, a franchise called Homevestors. And the first thing they told us day one is you've got to set a monthly marketing budget, and you can't go up or down. You have to spend the same amount of money, not the same amount of money. I mean, you can you can increase it over time, but – you need to spend money every single month and you can't pull in and out and in and out. And that's where really you get the inconsistencies. And I just took that as gospel and I never changed it. And it's always worked. Mm. That's Love fantastic. That. So what are the challenges with a system like this? Because I could see like getting like, th this is a lot of leads. I'm quite like speechless here. It's like, wow. <laughs> I'm thinking, holy cow, what I could do with this type of structure, right? Um, yeah, so that, that's the <laughs> like, thing, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even kidding you. Like, if you came into my office and you said, I'm going to take over your brokerage for two years, we would probably 10x, you know, our revenue, yeah. right? And I, I know that because I know your system because I followed you and I listened to your podcast and everything like that. That's what I'm trying to do because I know we're leaving so much, you know, on the floor right now. So where do you find your challenges? Um, you know, where, where, where do you find challenges um, in, in your system? Because, you, again, I'm impressed with the lead flow. You're mm -hmm. doing deals, no question about it. So, yep. you know, but you're, you're also being transparent and say, hey, lead flow is not everything, but it is, nope. it is one of the most significant things. So where do you think you um, – where, where you're challenged the most? What are you really working on improving? 
right now the sales process. So we want to have a consistent sales process amongst all of our agents. Right now we're kind of just going out there and just, you know, some stuff sticks, some stuff doesn't. So we're working on creating a process that's, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly the same for each agent, but what I've had is one of my top salespeople go out with some of the newer people and he's finding that, you know, there's a lot of things that aren't being done properly, like just simple things like building rapport. How do you greet somebody? Yeah. How do you know when to go for the close? Do you trial close? All things like that. That and, and here's the problem for me is that I never was brought up as a real estate agent. You know, I never went to, I never trained under Greg Harrelson at Century 21 team and learn how to do things the right way. So I'm a guy here with a bunch of leads, but you know, sometimes I don't even know what I should even be recommending that they do. Mm. So I've kind of learned over the course of time that people do need to follow a process and I've got my top salesperson and me, we're kind of working on that, but it's a work in progress. And even as you know, you can create a process doesn't mean that every single agent is going to follow it. So, you know, I used to think, you know, you, you shoot a video, you send it out, everybody watches it and then they know what to do. And I learned the hard way. That's just not how things work. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we did in, in the context of what we're talking about now is we created a program uh, called script uh, certification. So I, like I, cre I, I created some videos on, on, on script mastery, like a program of like, here's how you master scripts. And, and script mastery was very simple. It was, I would give you the scripts. And in my case, I'm a big Mike Ferry guy. So I gave them Mike Ferry scripts and I said, here's what you got to do for you got, you know, you've got like 10 days, two weeks to get this done. Um, that was at least the recommended time. They would take those scripts and I wouldn't allow them on the phone. I was like, you could work here or whatever, but you're not getting on my phones and call in my databases if you're not going to be script for certified. Well, then I would have to give them the formula or the recipe for how to get script for certified. And basically, I gave them the Mike Ferry scripts and I said, okay, I want you to read these. Then I want you to write them all out. Then I want you to read them again. Then I want you to write them all out. Then I want you to record yourself reading the scripts. But I want you to record yourself reading the scripts in a very fast manner. Like, hello, this is Greg Harrelson, you know, really fast. Because the, the first part of, of, of memorization of scripts is really muscle memory. And we don't realize that when we're using the same script every time, then our tongue, our mouth, everything's moving in the same, in the same sequence because the, the words are in a certain sequence. So we're actually – the muscle memory is going to set in, and then that will help with people that feel like they're going to stutter and whatnot. So I said don't worry about sounding good. Actually read them very fast. And then I want you to record yourself reading them very fast, and I want you to listen to that very fast recording in your car for three straight days. Then when you're done, mm -hmm. I want you to take the scripts, and I want you to re-record, but I want you to do it in the regular voice now. Then I want you to listen to that recording for three days. Then I want you to take the scripts and re-record. What was happening, it was just kind of like listening to a, a song over and over again in their car. You know, you didn't, you didn't try to learn that Bruno Mars song. You didn't try to learn Frozen at any level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know damn well when it came on, your ass started singing it, right? Yeah. And it's because that thing was just in you. You were just constantly listening to it and learning it without knowing. So I'm making or I'm suggesting that they create their own music, which is the scripts, them, and then they listen to it. And every time they record and listen, they gain confidence because if they record it the first time and listen, they're like, oh, that sounds terrible. Well, record it again. And listen, well, it sounds a little bit better. Record it again. Listen, well, that doesn't sound that bad. Record it again. Listen, we'd, I'd have them rotate around four to five times. Then I know that they actually have probably memorized the scripts at that point. Then they're responsible for going into my office, talking to one of the managers, and actually standing up and saying the scripts in front of one of the managers who could then either say they are script certified and now they could continue getting leads or no, you need to go back and work on this. And then they would go work on that, come back, get script certified. And then that's when we would let them have either our leads or the databases that they could call. So that's kind of how we set it up in the beginning. And I think that's been very 
very, very helpful for us when we're going to invest our resources into them. We want to make sure that they can convert. And we also want to make sure that they're representing us properly when they're in the field talking to the consumer. So I don't know if that'll help, but maybe that's something, you know, it's sometimes hard to, to, to bring in something like script certif certification with existing agents, but it's really yeah. easy to set the standard for the next hire that you, that you make. That's the thing. That's the thing. It's like, I've gone through, I, I feel like, you know, the name of my brokerage is Cameron Real Estate Group. And I feel like two years ago, it was like Cameron 1.0, then Cameron 2.0, then Cameron 3.0 with the new agents and it's so difficult. Once somebody gets signed on and they go through the process, whatever that process is, to say, oh no, we're changing the process and making it, you know, I I wanna say the word more difficult, but to me, it's like, you know, don't you wanna get better, but it's tough at, at that point. So the new people that come on, it's like, they're like, what do I do? And they just do whatever we we say to do. Um, so what would you do with the older people? Would you just say, at that point, deal with it? Or, I mean, what is your take on yeah. that? Well, all of your older people are going to hate me if they watch this video. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I will, um, you know, I'll be as transparent as I can, but also, you know, let my heart come out. Um, what I would do is I would have sit down conversations and I'd ask them why the hell they're in the business in the first place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and what I would probably identify with a huge portion of them that they're not in the business to make money. I would probably find out that they're in the business to make money because they need money to trade for something else that they really want out of their life. Mm -hmm. And when I could figure out what that is that they really want, and then I can, and then I would do my best to share with them that if we want to get what you really want, which is, um, you know, maybe a your first vacation with your children because you haven't taken them to Disney World yet, or whatever that is, like whatever that that thing that tugs at their heart that they don't tell anybody, but they're pissed off and depressed and and stressed out about not having it. I need to find out what that is because I can go to my agents all day long and say, hey, you want to make some more money? Let's get script certified. They're like, nah. But when I go mm -hmm. back to them and I say, hey, look, remember when you told me that you wanted to achieve a certain level of income so your wife would no longer have to work two jobs and she could hang out with the kids and you, you were talking to me about like what type of value that, you're, that, that, um, that you could give your family if, if they weren't so stressed about money? Remember when you to told me that? Well, my question is, is if I gave you a solution that would cause you to get out of your comfort box, your comfort level for a little bit, but I – I showed you a solution that by doing what I showed you, you would actually be able to achieve this in the next 12 months. Would you follow my advice? Mm -hmm. And you know what? A lot of them are not going to, mm -hmm. but five of them will, 10 of yep. them will, 20 of them. Will. And, and somebody like you, Tom, that has this type of lead volume, you get 10 out of the 160 to buy in. Those 10 will add another 200 deals to you. That's only 20 deals per person. Those 10 mm -hmm. will add another 200 deals to your production, probably within 12 months when they say, okay, I'm committed. Mm -hmm. And so you're not going to try to tackle all 160, but just like, just like the 1,000 leads or 1,500 leads you might get per month, you know, only 400 of those end up in appointments. 1,100 don't. Well, you got 160 agents. Maybe only 10 of them are going to end up buying in to what we just talked about. That doesn't mean the other ones are bad. That doesn't mean they have to leave. It just means that you gave everyone an opportunity. 10 of them decided to take you up on it and now watch those 10 flourish. Now, what will happen? is people will be looking at those 10 and said, look at them. They're practicing their scripts. <laughs> I've never had to do that. That's what they'll look at. And then all of a sudden, those 10, well, their production will start going up. And then in six months, the, the tune changes. And it's like, man, look at them. Look at what they're doing. Wow, look at their growth. Maybe I should do that. So you need a small group that will set the example and then be that example, and then watch how other people will start to want what they want, and they'll make the connection between, they, I get what I want when I do these things. 
So you just need mm -hmm. a small team to take this on. I've, I get this asked all the time. If I'm an existing company, what would you do? I would hire two or three people. And when I hire them in, I would say, this is going to be the structure. You're going to get script certified. We're going to do this. And I would secretly just be working with them and coaching them. And then watch in six months to 12 months, everyone's looking, how did they do 50 deals their first it's year? It's really, really interesting that you say that because I've started to do that. I've started to pick right. off some of the, the new people and I'm like, these are the people I'm going to make successful and then basically pilot that program out to the rest of you know the brokerage. So that's, that's what I'm awesome. working on right now. Um, so when you're talking about like bringing people into the the Harrelson group, are you, I mean, do you, what do you do with the experienced agent or who, you know, doesn't really want to change their ways? Do you even take them onto your team or do you, how, do, how does that work? So I'm, you know, I guess my, my, my business model all around, it all revolves around me developing talent. Okay. Yep. So I, I, I preface it, my answer. Um, by saying that because if somebody is producing already and they don't want to do my model, okay, mm -hmm. or whatever the perception is my model is, then that's insignificant to me. I'm not, mm -hmm. it's not about me taking Tom. And a coach doesn't take Tom and say, Tom, you got to do it my way. A good coach takes Tom and says, Tom, tell me a little bit about yourself. How have you been getting these transactions? What are you looking to accomplish? What do you do good? What do you think you're not so good at? My job is to get in their world and then mm -hmm. as a coach to form and then to figure out where do they want to go and then to give them maybe multiple options on how to connect the dots between where they are and where they want to go. If a top agent says, I don't want a prospect, well, what do you like to do? Well, I like to do direct mail. Well, let me see your direct mail piece. And then I find mm -hmm. out that they're, they're putting stamps on postcards to an area that they could have done EDDM. And instead of paying, you know, 14, 18 cents or whatever it is for postage, they're paying like 48 or 49 cents. Now, all mm -hmm. of a sudden, I start talking to them by asking them questions about what they're already doing. I find inefficiencies. And when I find those inefficiencies and I coach them to make become more efficient and more profitable, guess what I just acquired? I acquired their trust. Then mm -hmm. I have the ability to make now introduce something to them that might not necessarily been in their box, but because they've seen how I've helped them, you know, with things that were already in their box, they may actually take on and listen to something that's not in their box. So it's kind of like, um, it, you know, it's, it, it's a process and, and it progresses over time. So how does Greg Harrelson, someone who's still on the phones every day, making calls with his team, running the company, still have time to personally mentor and coach these individual people? Because it seems like you would run out of time, you know, at some volume. Yeah. So that's a good question, too. So um, Greg Harrelson is not making outbound calls. I have not You're calling made your an, sphere, though, right? I'm not making any outbound calls. Greg Harrelson is okay. not making one outbound call, and I have not made an outbound call um, for multiple years. Now, what I have done is I have built tremendous databases, which I would love to get my hands on your database. I, I built tremendous <laughs> databases and I've nurtured them in a way where I've likely become an authority in their minds and they're now calling me. Mm -hmm. So I'm not making an outbound call, but people are calling me up and said, hey, Greg, I've been getting your information, uh, your email, uh, you know, updates on a, on a monthly basis for the last four years. I want to sell my property. Can you come out here and list it? I mean, it's literally like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so for me to make that, if there's one or two people calling me every day to list, um, that's totally different than and takes a lot less time than me having to find, you know, through prospecting one or two people. So mm -hmm. um, then I also look at my schedule and I, I and I basically put my company first. And if I don't have time, then I'm giving that business to somebody else. I'm just giving mm -hmm. it saying, hey, you take care of this. And then they call them and say, hey, I work with Greg closely. You know, we're partners. And I'm going to come out there and talk with you. And then they go list the business. So I'm managing it like that. The other thing is, is I don't do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do group coaching. I do it over conference calls. So I'm not going into a classroom and, and standing there. It's too inefficient. People are talking, you know, and pissing me off because they're looking at their cell phones and all that other stuff. So I do go ahead and I get on a conference call every Tuesday at 1045. I do a coaching call. It's a planned subject. 
that I plan ahead. I go in there and give that. I record that and I, and I archive it because then I can then broadcast it out at other times because I'm, so I'm constantly creating content content mm -hmm. just like this we're going to create this content and it's going to be out in, in 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 the world and it may go out multiple times while i'm doing the same thing then i've i've also branched out and created a kind of a coaching team where i have a few people that are in my company that are qualified to coach and they will have structured boot camps on buyers on sellers um we'll have a, a, a new agent uh you know training that might last for 30 days that a manager might be in charge of so i i have a coaching calendar for the entire year already mapped out that has learning sessions in it in addition to my conference calls um, there's probably at least two to three boot camps every month and some other learning sessions as well as my coaching calls that are going on over conference call so my total time invested in that is is not 40 hours even for an entire month my total time personally may only be around eight or nine hours for a month to pull all that off because I have some people that I'm leveraging so how do I go from point A to point B, where I'm at today to that? To that, I would say, um, number one, I, I, <laughs> to that. Um, number yeah, I, know one, it's not, I know it's not a three-month fix, um, but, you know, no, roughly speaking. Yeah. Number one, I think what you just said that you were doing, you're taking a small little team. You need to create massive success with a small little group. Mm -hmm. That validates your talking. So what, what was really strong for me is when I was a producer, not necessarily doing what I'm doing now, and I still produce 200 transactions a year with just come list me business, okay? Now, mm -hmm. but when I was producing the 300s and the 400 levels in production as a small little team, I've walked the walk, so I, I am the validation. If anybody challenges me and says, well, let's role play Fizbo's, you don't call anymore, you probably can't do that, I will bust them up. I can role play anything at any time with anybody. We've, I've just been involved with so many calls over the years. So I've got validation. So it's very easy for me to go in and say, you know, hey, you know, all of the 100 deal producers were coached by me in my market. So, you know, I've got the history. So create something like that. Invest in those few people. Create that validation. Then it's now you've got a story and say, okay, now here's how we're going to do that. Then you go in and make sure that you start a conference. I would, I would do a coaching call once a, a week. If you're not already doing it, do a coaching mm -hmm. call once a week and go out there and just get everyone involved in the fact that you're giving coaching. Don't be attached, by the way, to how much they consume. You will stress mm -hmm. out and be pissed off at all times. If you're, if you're attached to how much coaching they will consume of yours, you're always gonna be disappointed. I've had some of my, my partner, Brendan Payne, I've, I've talked with him because sometimes I feel like he gets frustrated because some people, you know, he, he's given his all and given this coaching and they're not listening. I'm like, look, dude, if I was attached and found, and, and found, and, and, and found my personal value based on how much they implement that I say, I would have I already been out of this business. I have to be attached to what I'm delivering. I don't need to be attached to what somebody's going to consume. And if I stay focused on delivering, eventually I will get enough people to actually mm -hmm. listen and act on my message. So that'd be some advice. You start it, but don't judge them for not listening. Judge yourself for not actually doing it. Mm, yeah, we I do that and I do get frustrated. I don't get I don't take it more as, you know, a validation thing for me. I take it more okay. as man, um, don't you guys want to make more money? And, you yeah. know, you need help, but you're not, you know, seeking it out. So that's that's kind of how I look at it. But like you're kind of illustrating, it's not a matter of that. You're looking for, for the right people that are going to listen. So yeah. definitely they, great they, advice. When, 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 the coach, um, when the coach appears, the players will show up also. So I yeah. believe the coach has to show up first. The players – Phil Jackson didn't have a lot of problems finding people to play under him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the coach was there. The players, that was the easy part. The hardest part is to get the coach to show up. <laughs> it really is. I yeah. mean, you'll see it in every company, uh, just about every company. Everyone says, oh, yeah, I coach my agents. I train my agents. I guarantee you they're so inconsistent. 
or their form of coaching is not them actually coaching. Their form of coaching is taking a video off of the internet. Maybe they're taking one of your YouTube videos and, and blasting it within the community. No, or within the, uh, the office. No, that's not coaching. I don't mm -hmm. think that that's a bad idea to take a video of yours and send it to my agents. But that's not coaching. Let's not confuse things. The coach has to show up and, and, and be the example, and they have to do it and do the hard work before they can expect that the players are going to do it. So, you know, when we're talking about, you know, leveling up, which is the name of your podcast, right, how long of a process do you think it is from, from the level I'm at to the next level? Well, is what it is a year? the next is level? It two yeah, years? What, 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 tell me what the, the next level for you is. I think the next level for me is I've got people converting at a, a decent rate all across the board. The people who are taking my leads are all out there, maybe 20, 25, 30% conversion, which for my leads is good because we are going out there with an investment offer and it's not a typical listing appointment. Sure. So again, what's the next level for you though? Like define, oh, give me a target. So like, where are you? And if you were gonna throw a dart, tell me where the, where, what, what am I trying to hit? I only need two points. I need to know where you are and where you're going. Drawing the yes. map is the easy part. Identifying the two points is usually the toughest thing to do. Yeah, so where I'm at is probably about 10% conversion on these face-to-faces with the lower level converting agents. And then I've got, you know, the ones that are killing it at 30, 35, 40%. So to get, you know, 20 to 25 more agents all on the same level. Yeah. So, so let's just, I'm going to, as a hypothetical, let's just say that your blended average for conversion ratios right now is 15%. And mm -hmm. it's a Probably hypothetical. Right. Okay. Let's just say mm -hmm. 15%. And so what would you like that to be? 30%. Ideally 30%. that, I think, okay. yeah. Okay, so go from 15% to 30%. So the, the, the key is with that is, in my opinion, is to go back and take that little small team and make it a little bit bigger team, okay? Mm -hmm. And then for all the other people that you have, what I would be doing is I would be setting standards, not the same standards that you might have on this small team, but I would just say everybody's, if you're not willing to live up to at least one small standard, then we really need to be talking about whether or not you're the right fit for the company. Okay. And mm -hmm. everyone's probably willing to like agree to one standard. We'll find out what, what that one standard is for all the people that are in your office and get that go, get that moving in the right direction. Don't try to change everything. Just try to change one thing and say, okay, this is a standard that we have to live up to or, or no more leads will be distributed. Okay. Can you so, give me and, just a simple example on that? Sure. Like show up one. at eight o'clock. Show up at eight o'clock in the office. Okay. Okay. Or it could be make fifteen contacts. Mm -hmm. Or or it could be role play uh, thirty minutes a day for four days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was so gonna say, the, Greg, if the if you're trying to double the conversion ratio on existing leads, right? I mean, the standard you want the standard to be linked to the improvement of their skills yes. in the appointment, right? Yes, you notice how I didn't set a standard on how many appointments. I set right. a, I, this. I would set the standards on things that they can control. Like for instance, yeah. somebody may say, "Well, I can't get there by eight o'clock because of traffic, and I got to drop my my child off." That's no problem. Okay, what time could you get here in a perfect world? I could get there by nine. Well, what time do you usually get here? Ten. Okay, they can get here by nine, but they get here by ten. So set a standard of them getting there by nine. That's something that they can control. They just admitted it. It's some, something they can control is a number of contacts. Something they can control is, is, is time invested in role playing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make it easy for them where I'm going to set a standard with them that I know they can achieve. And the only reason they wouldn't achieve it is if because they just didn't make the commitment. It had nothing to do with skill. It has to do with whether they will or they will not. And if they will not, then I should not give those leads. Mm -hmm. Then you, I'm good. the one that's irresponsible. I've got one more hypothetical for you. So, you yeah. know, brand new, brand new agent signs onto your team. They're, they're hungry. They're motivated. How soon do you think in your system you can get them to that conversion point if they're willing to do whatever it is that you recommend? So I'm not I'm not trying to get them to a certain conversion point. I'm not measuring it like 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 you are. And and I totally get why you are, because 
you're looking at ROI on all this money you're spending, all these leads you're bringing in. But maybe I can answer it a little different because I would just be making up the answer because I'm not measuring it that way. Um, I think within the first uh, 30 days to 60 days, somebody should already be in a position to start earning business, whether it be listing or a buyer sale. And I've got multiple agents that are closing 40, 40, 35 to 45 transactions their first year. That was With, my that's answer. A brand so, new li that's a yeah. brand new licensee. Yeah, so within two months, you can get them to a, a standard which is pretty sufficient. Yes, well, and, and the standards I'm – so I I always set standards based on an agent's activity versus an agent's production because <laughs> some agents are going to, to – to, um, to develop at different times. You know, it's like, man, I get one agent, he's like got three listings his first two weeks and he just got licensed. And then mm -hmm. I got another agent that it's three months and they, they, they get their first listing, but then after they got the first listing, now they're averaging, you know, six a month. It's like interesting how everyone just kind of progresses. So what I focus on is what are the activities that will make somebody successful and hold them to the standards of those activities? Mm. Makes sense. I'm not. If you show hmm. up, you'll eventually blow up, is what I say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so just I mean, show up and do these things, and you'll eventually blow up. And then, Greg, but you what's, may, what's but the, you may blow would, up at a different time than the, your neighbor. Maybe a different hmm. time frame. Would you say, Matt? Uh, I was just going to ask you, Greg, if you if you're in that situation and and you can approach it from it, whether if it it was your office that was this way or maybe maybe like. Tom says, "Hey, Greg, come into my office and just like let's let's get this knocked out." <clears throat> so you got 160 is that, is that agents. An that you, that's, <laughs> I don't know. Probably I'm not. Totally that would be where Greg. I wouldn't have enough time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but let's talk about that because the time, Tom, you've mentioned it before. You've got 160 agents, and you want to have that conversation with them of like, "Hey, let's set aside the people that are already actively working the leads and they have good conversion ratios." Now let's take everybody else. So let's say that's 120 agents, right? And you want to have conversations with most or all of them that go something like, hey, here's the standard that we need to figure out a standard that we agree to in order for you to receive leads. Uh, so Greg, how would you tackle having those conversations quickly? Would you start with, let's say, you know, a broadcast out to everyone? Would you start with an in-person meeting? Like how would you have those conversations and narrow that group of 120 agents down as quickly as possible to the group of people that are willing to raise and meet like a minimum standard to at least consider um, receiving those leads still? So a couple of things. Uh, the, the thing that comes to my mind is I'd probably advertise or promote that, you know, next week at Wednesday at 10 o'clock, I'm going to actually be um, doing a conference call, a coaching call with the company. And I'm going to talk about some new things that's going on in the company, um, talking about setting standards, talking about reaching higher goals and what I can do to help you, you know, uh, reach the next level or level up. Um, so I would promote that. And then one of the first things that I'd be looking at is who shows up for that call. Because mm -hmm. all 160 is not going to show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 20 are going to show up for the first time. They're going to say, Oh, I didn't have time without well, just meant it was something was a higher priority. Now I just narrowed it down to a smaller list. Then I might go down and I might send an email and I say, Hey, I just cut a video and I want, I want you to look at this video, the video and tell them in the body of the email, this video is about, you know, some changes that I want to make some things that I'm committed to, to helping you grow your business and setting some standards and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden have the, 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 the link in the email and then monitor who opens and watches the video. Because see, some people may respond back to you. Some people may not respond back to you. Those, those could be two different categories. And some people could watch the video and not respond back to you. So I'm looking for the people who open the email and didn't respond and didn't click. That'll be a little bit lower priority. People that open the email and actually watch the video and respond will be a higher priority. And then the person who opened the, the email and watched the video will be right under the other person. So I could actually go through in my 160 agents and find out what, who, who out of these 160 is my message resonating with. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to be my short list, and I'm going to go knock out those meetings first. Mm. And then, yeah. you, then you'd have all right. So you narrow down, and then you'd have one-on-one -on -one meetings with each of those um, very it, narrowed it, down list. I, I tend to not try first? to do. I, 
I try to not do so many one-on-ones because that would be yeah. grueling. That might take a lot of time. Yeah. So at that time, I just might say, you know, invite them all in to a, the conference room or invite them somewhere and actually have a group discussion. But we know they're all kind of in that conversation at the moment. Right. Okay. The one-on-one will come when they, you know, after, say, a group discussion, and then all of a sudden say, you know, you're going to have people that are going to listen to you, Tom, but not really – venture out and, 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 and voice their opinions too much in this meeting. But what you'll also have is you'll have a few people that'll probably pull you aside and say, man, I really appreciate you kind of bringing us all together. And I'm, I'm glad to see that's the direction we're going in. See, you don't, to, to go from where you want to go or where you are to go where you, you want to go, it doesn't take a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that you don't need the 160, but for you to go to the next level, you only need 10 people to buy in. That's the mistake. Ten people to buy in that does that you increase them by thirty transactions. That's three hundred transactions. And that's I think the biggest mistake that I've made is I I just kept hiring people thinking that that was actually the solution when it wasn't. Yeah. No, you can't hire your way um, away from this problem. You can't. The hiring mm-hmm. doesn't solve this. This is, you know, this is, you know, something that you're very capable of. This is you saying, you know what? I got to step up my game, and I've got to lead the current people at a higher level before mm-hmm. I start bringing in more people to lead. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. That's why I would I would think through it. And I know you're capable. It's just putting it in context, right? And saying, okay, this is my my model. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, we're running out of time, Tom. Any any last burning questions? <laughs> Man, I mean, you know, I you know, and you still don't you still won't sell any coaching programs. You still you know no. none of that stuff, right? Man. No, I, hey, no, I'm not. Uh... What, about, what about getting the hands on some of the recordings? Anything like that? <laughs> uh, well, you got the, you got your hands on this one. I could probably send you an audio of some of my coaching calls because I do archive all of my Tuesday coaching calls. Everything I do is preserved. We need to do something with that. Seriously, yeah, like, I, 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 even I didn't know all that was going on. Oh yeah, yeah I got them get all me. archived, and 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 uh, and so we re I, I I recycle through the material in my office, and you know I believe like you know for me a lot of times I will say things in a coaching conversation that I myself like, damn, I've never said it like that before. So I ar- I archive everything, everything. Mm-hmm. Right now I've got um, somebody actually going through the last 10 calls, coaching calls, because they last around anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes um, and going in and transcribing them. Mm. Right. Yeah, I would listen Sorry, to them. I mean, I put, the, I put them on my phone and just, you know, when I'm driving, you know, take a listen to them. I mean, you know, I'm a very big student, so I love yeah, hearing, good. you know, different things like that. So, yeah, I mean, don't make me drive over there or fly over there and, and break into your offices. Just, just yeah, send you them look, to me. You got pretty big shoulders, by the way, so I don't know what you're – you know, I'm thinking this guy probably works out because I can see in your shoulders. I'm like, he probably kicked my butt, man. I better give him what he wants. No, I, I work I work out, but I'm not a tough guy. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely love to get my hands on, on any of that stuff just to see sure. how other people are doing it, you know. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I'm sure I can yeah, send Troy, you Troy Davis is watching okay. right now. He says that we would all like access to Greg's coaching calls. Well, wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't we all? Break open all the right, vault. I'll, break I'll open the vault. That. That's right. Uh, all right, so, so Tom, fill us in just real quick on how people can connect with you. Uh, we, you know, there was, uh, one of the questions earlier was uh, that we didn't get to cover was just can you go deep on the four lead sources? And, and I think you go into that on, um, on, on your main webinar, right? Yeah, I mean, and it's pretty simple. I mean, mailing is mailing, right? Um, Cold calling, we use a thousand calls a day, which is just an out, you know, uh, company that you can just pay to generate the leads. Google pay per click is you're just literally, you know, putting an ad out there when somebody searches sell my house fast Boston, they're clicking on the ad and I'm paying for that lead. And Facebook now is probably our best source of leads. And you know, people are on Facebook all day long. So when they're scrolling through their news feed and I'm looking to buy a house in Boston, Massachusetts, if they live in Boston, Massachusetts, they're a certain age, they fit a certain demographic profile, they're going to see my ad, click on it and generate the lead that way. Gotcha. That's awesome. Uh, very, very cool. Um, and then, yeah, so by the way, Tom, we're my, uh, quick reminder, let people know how to connect with you and then how they can uh, get, get in touch with your, especially about the coaching and how you can run kind of that stuff for them. 
the lead. Yeah. So on all the all, all the real estate, you know, investing side. So I'm, you know, a ten out of ten on that stuff. The brokerage stuff, I'm like a two out of ten. So I'm working to get to, to Greg. <laughs> I'm working to get to Greg's level. But um, on the on the real estate investing side, I know that in you know backwards and forwards. And the, the best way to get in touch with me is really to get on my email list. And you can do that by going to www realestateinvestingiseasy.com. And if you put in your email, then you're automatically going to get some training from me for free. You're going to get access. We do uh, live training sessions every single day on Facebook Live, and I'm going to send you information on how to get on those if you guys want to learn how to be real estate investors, which is really, you know, my forte. But the, the brokerage mm -hmm. stuff just, uh, it's, it's been such an opportunity. That's why I'm focused on it right now. Yeah. Right. Well, and that's what it is. It's not a problem. It's an opportunity because it's just it's another mm. huge revenue source. Yeah. So it's it's worth it's worth putting the uh, the time into figuring it out. But yeah, it's definitely not. It's it's a good problem that you've created for yourself. So. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Greg. It's, it's not a bad problem. No, no, it's not a, not a bad problem to have at all. Uh, Greg, so besides wanting 1,500 motivated seller leads a month, uh, Man, <laughs> I'm telling you, you're I, drooling I, over that. I, I, I am drooling over that. I, yeah. I was just getting lost in my own head again, saying, God dang, if I had 1,500 seller yeah, leads oh, right man, now. Yeah. Be, there'd be an <laughs> army of little mini Greg Harrelsons wandering around Myrtle Beach. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay, yes. so Greg, how do people reach out and connect with you? You know, it's as easy as just emailing me, Greg Harrelson at Gmail. I don't have any coaching sites to send you to. You know, just email me direct, and I do get, you know, a few emails all the time that I uh, that I answer. I do my best. You know, a lot of people are messaging me through uh, Facebook Messenger. That's a fantastic way to communicate with me, so please do that, and you just find me on, on, under Greg Harrelson. Nothing fancy. Yep, yeah, and uh, and you and I did a training video on how to get started with marketing automation, which you kind of briefly touched on how you generate all these kind of inbound calls. Mm -hmm. And for those that didn't catch the conversation with Jan Pittman, where we went into that a little bit in depth, guys, go find that podcast episode to get a little bit more detail. But if you really want to get started on that part of it, uh, building up those databases of people that you're reaching out to consistently through content, monitoring their response and their engagement level, and then reaching back out. And Greg, you alluded to the fact that you're you're using Using those same mechanisms with your team, sending out content, monitoring who's watching, who's engaging, and then kind of prioritizing your coaching uh, based on that. That's all done with an Infusionsoft. So guys, to learn more about how to get started with that end of things, go to theleveluppodcast.com. Uh, you can actually just type backslash free, or you can just click on the, the free training uh, right from the, the podcast site, pop in your email, and you get immediate instant access to that training video that we did. I think it's about 25 minutes where we go into the first steps of how to get started with that. So with that being said, I uh, just wanted to quickly thank everybody for watching us here on Facebook. Uh, we're here basically every couple weeks on Wednesday morning. Uh, you can also subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, or Stitcher, depending on your device. Tom, this is awesome. Greg, this is uh, just yeah. uh, an amazing conversation. I really appreciate you guys like opening up about like Tom's business and going in depth and stuff like that. Guys, if you have other agents that you would like to see that are that are killing it in some way, uh, that would love to do that like this type of strategy session with Greg, send them my way, message me on Facebook, introduce me to them. Uh, happy to have a quick call with them to learn more about their business and see if they're a good fit for the show because this was uh, this is an awesome episode. So yeah. guys yeah. and the audience, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.